Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures. Tonight, episode 110, and we are talking about the sounds of spring. And just as it sounds, I mean, the temperatures are warming up, snow's pretty much gone, the rain kind of moved in, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, we're starting to hear all those wonderful sounds of spring that a lot of people have come to love and expect here in Nova Scotia. So, what does that really mean to you, Ben? Well, I, I think I'd kind of forgotten how how much sound was involved in, in, in spring, like, going all the winter, it was... It's kind of quiet and the trees have lost all their leaves and you just kind of forget the exhilaration of, of when, you know, the sun starts coming out a bit more and the buds are coming out on the trees. And every morning now when I go out to my car, the air is just full of the sound of birds and stuff singing. And it's it's kind of like a siren's call. Like it's, it's I'm really getting the urge to get out there more. Uh, and, I, and I know like, you know, the last few months have been kind of wet and soggy and hasn't been over great. So it's, it's really kind of exciting. Uh, and I, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. Like it's just such, such an awesome time of year. Not that any time isn't like we've been pretty happy about fall and we were super happy about winter. And we're excited about summer, but just something about this time of year is just really thrilling. So I, I thought that might be a great topic to talk about. No, I completely agree. And the first sound of spring, quote unquote, that I heard was a few weeks ago. And I'm sure you can attest to this. That comes every spring just as the snow starts to go. Canadian geese. I sleep Man. with the window open ever so slightly and you can hear those suckers going in the morning. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot more this year. I, I swear there's there's like an overabundance of them more so than normal. Like I'm seeing a ton of them. And pheasants. I'm seeing so many pheasants in the last couple of weeks. Probably more than I've seen like in years combined hmm. in, in just the last few weeks. Well, might be good news for us hunters come to the fall. I actually have seen a couple pheasants this year, but I've, I've only seen two. Uh, but like you said, the geese. Haven't seen many, heard tons. Uh, I know they frequent just behind my place. Uh, there's a school, and then there's a great big field in behind there. And they, you know, there's a little pond in the field, and they take over the field, much like they do here in Nova Scotia. And it sounds deafening some mornings with these things honking around and just, you know, the typical Canadian goose craziness. Really big monkey. The sound of slapping out black flies. No real black flies here yet, though. Not yet. Uh, a little bit longer. Still a little too cool at night for them. I mean, tonight's supposed to dip into the minuses. Uh, tomorrow night's, I think, supposed to be minus four. So still just ever so slightly too cold. Though I did start seeing mosquitoes the other day when we had that warm spell. Yeah. Yellow oh, pollen. Oh, they're coming yellow pollen. Well, we, we don't even have green yet, buddy. No. Like... <laughs> now you're still a little way off for that yet. But uh, no, I mean, there is significant sounds of spring. And like you said, I, I mean, the Canadian geese, they, they kind of come first and foremost before any other birds migrate in. Uh, I did see some robins out in the last few days. That's always a good sign. I mean, I've seen them before, but then they kind of disappeared again. But now they seem to be constantly and consistently out. Well, I'm seeing the chickadees. I'm seeing robins. I'm seeing jays. I've seen a few types of woodpeckers in the last little while. Like I said, the pheasants. You, you mentioned... The, the Canadian geese, the ducks are going. Mm -hmm. uh, down the cabin the other day, my buddy Rob said he was out. He'd seen a big white bird with a black head that he didn't recognize. He's He's been at the cabin for years in the Nova Scotia. So like, there's even some slightly newer type birds for us here. You know, probably been around other places for years, but newer here. So things are happening. It's like stuff is, is going on. It's great. Uh, the mornings, uh, the mornings are now, I mean, they're still cool. They're still crisp morning, but you know, the sun's up so much earlier. It's just such a, you know, it's, it's kind of more of an exciting time. It's a lot more refreshing in the mornings now and the sun's staying up later. So you get to hear stuff later into the day. I mean, uh, it's eight 30 now and I can still kind of see out the window towards my neighbors. I mean, it's still, it's dark, but it's not like that pitch black. It was only like a month ago. Oh yeah, seemed like a month ago at supper time it was pitch. Like yeah. that's it. Like you came home from work and you went straight to bed. 
Pretty much. I mean, during the winter, I wake up, I go to work, the sun's just coming up, so I don't really get to see it. I come home, the sun's basically already gone down, so I don't get to see it. Work during the winter for me consists of basically not seeing the sun until my day's yeah. off. Oh, for me, it's it's kind of the worst because I, I drive into work, I go over an overpass to get, get over the highway, and the sun is oftentimes right in my eyes. That's the sun coming over the horizon. And then when I leave, it's on the other side, like just teasing me, like, you missed me. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Dips down. When I on. lived in Marigamish, Barney's River area, I used to travel to Antikinish. Um, let's say it was for work. Uh, anyway, <laughs> in the mornings, sun's in your eyes. On the way home, sun's in your eyes. You're blind, regardless. It, it was one of yeah. the most notorious sections for that. So I know what you mean. Yeah. I don't know. I'm... You know, uh, it's it's getting really nice here. I'm, I'm kind of excited. It's, there's a lot of opportunity coming up. The the lakes are all pretty well opened up now. Uh, I mean, some of them have been open for a while. Some of them are opening up more recently. But uh, boats are going into water real mm -hmm. soon. I'm excited for that. Like that's that's always a big thing for me in the year. Uh, getting some more time into the uh, in the water. I mean, I don't know about where you're at, but down where I'm at, you're also starting to hear the buzz in the mornings of lobster fishermen heading out to start getting their traps, you know, geared up to get ready and doing their do. Because it won't be long and their boats will be in the water too, right? You sound like you're in a maritime province. Almost, um, right? Almost like a maritime province. And if nobody guesses, uh, we are definitely in Nova Scotia. In Nova Scotia, I mean, there's only three things to do in Nova Scotia. You either work in the woods, you work on a farm, or you work basically on a lobster boat. Don't get me wrong, there's a bunch of stuff in between, but that's our three major industries. Uh, I know it's stereotypical, but the stereotype is based on a little bit of truth, would you not say? I guess. I mean, neither of us work in your fields. I mean, I used to work at a farm. I worked in the woods for ages. I did work on a lobster. I've done all three in my life. So... The smart ones of us get away from it, I guess. You know, it's funny. Like, I grew up in in Newfoundland, and it's funny because a lot of people assume, oh, Newfoundland, he's, he's a fisherman. He spent his, you know, he spent his fair share of time on boats. And uh, I didn't. Uh, honestly, for me to get on a boat growing up was like a two-hour drive. Uh, it just didn't happen. I grew up so far in the woods, it's not even funny. Uh for the island in Newfoundland, I was as inland as you could get, right? Um, but yeah, the, for there, the woods was was a big thing. A lot of people worked cutting wood and, and for the pulp and paper industry and for firewood and stuff like that. So that, that was huge. And mining. Mining was big back home. Yeah, I guess, uh, well, this area right here, mining's big. West Ray used to be right here and stuff like that. But, I mean, um, slightly off topic. But anyway, getting back to the sounds of spring. So we do have some birds floating in, um, starting to see a lot more animals in general starting to surface out. You know what I mean? I heard some, uh, complaints already of, uh, Mr. Black Bear wandering that out and starting to turn up green bins and sniffing around places they probably shouldn't be. So that's another good indication that spring's rolling around. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, they're waking up deer. I'm seeing so many deer on the sides of the roads and out on the fields and stuff like everything's coming out. I think things are just starting to come alive. Like plants are starting to grow again. So, so greenery's coming out and animals are, are moving around and you know, it's, I think everyone's kind of waking up. It's like, we're coming out of a big slumber. Like everyone was kind of asleep or away and now we're all just kind of waking up and coming in. So have you noticed the general moods of people? have been improving as the snow has gone away. And especially those couple days where we had that were actually warm and sunny, everybody seemed to get in a better mood. And I mean everybody. And now that it's gone away, I, especially at work, it seems like everybody is just ready to boil over again. Like, it was the tease <laughs> that was ripped away from them, and it's just... I mean, I don't know, I find it kind of funny, but it, it's, it's, it's definitely out there. I mean, um, what do they call it? Seasonal... Sids. Sid, sids or sads or something like that yeah but i mean the seasons really do affect the mood for people you know what i mean really does and spring is kind of that time for uh rebirth or renewal or whatever you want to call it and you get those pleasant smells along with the sounds like uh, i'm starting to be able to smell grass again 
which is kind of nice because, you know, it's finally on buried from under the grass and, or sorry, from under the snow and it's starting to turn green a little bit out here anyway. I'm sure yours is too. The brown is starting to go away. You're starting to get a little bit of fresh grass. As you said, the buds are in the air or on the trees and you can see them. Um, yeah. And the big thing for me right now is I start to smell a lot of softwood trees. Don't know why, but I always seem like I smell a lot of softwood trees in the spring. Yeah, yeah, we did. It does seem like all the senses are waking up, it, it, and and it's, it's it's a funny thing to say. Like you know, there's 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 smells and tastes and sounds in all seasons, but spring seems to have some of the strongest, most intense ones, and uh, it's 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 really you know it's really uh waking up but like i really urge to get out there like i definitely gonna be you know trying to get out harder and harder and I, I got a few things i have to get dealt with before i can really hit the woods which is unfortunate but it's like um but the good thing is even considering the rain and stuff we had if you notice the ground's drying up a little bit like it's firmer yeah so that that's a good thing i was actually kind of surprised i thought this summer or sorry the spring it was going to stay soupy for a long time. And I'm not saying it's hard by any stretch of the imagination, but it's firmer than I way gave it credit for. Like I, I had to walk back out to the woodshed. I grabbed an armload of wood uh, just where it's been getting chillier at night. So we put a little fire on and I'm not like slipping and sliding through two inches of mud, which I expected. It, it's just kind of, I'm walking on soft ground. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. And I've even like taken, taken the vehicle out and done some some backwoods exploring just trying to do something different and it's it's not bad back there like some of the spots i've hit like it's it's reasonable uh definitely kind of want like uh, some kind of buddy system I, I i went as far as i was going by myself <laughs> <laughs> don't think the old traction boards are going to dig out of some of those places well maybe but it's kind of <laughs> nice to have somebody to swear at while you're doing it <laughs> You want to be sure, because you're back far enough that if it doesn't, you're going to be a while walking out. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm stubborn enough I won't, and I will just stay back there until I'm dead. Like, that's the thing. They'll find my dead body. And, and With the car. Still pushing on the front. Like, the skeleton will be literally pushing on it. Like, I can do this. <laughs> but but no. Uh, no, the other thing that we're starting to hear a lot now off... Um, Peepers. I think I told you this the other night, and I can hear them now just outside the window. I kind of have my headphone half cracked off there. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely peepers. Like I said, there's a couple ponds on either side of me, and it's it's a nice sound to go to sleep with. But you only hear that in the spring, right? Uh, they're really big down to my cabin. So when I get down there, I'll be down there probably the weekend, and the next few weekends we'll get down there doing some stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's beautiful down there. Uh sound to that and and the one i haven't heard yet this year but i'm so excited to hear it is the loon you haven't heard any loons yet this year haven't heard it yet but it's coming like I'm, i know it's there i've seen one so i, I know no the loons there i just haven't heard it uh i've even heard the owl uh i was worried because we have a tree where our owl used to live and somebody cut it down uh, the wife cried a little bit over that but anyways the owl's still in the area. We can still hear him. We call him Hootie, and he's, he's up there. I think it's a little barn owl. He helps keep the mice population down, so we're, we're pretty proud of him. You know? <laughs> uh, so, no. Um, so, those are some of the big sounds for, for us. What are the big sounds for our listeners? Like, anyone listening? Like, is there any big sounds or anything that's really starting to come out that's kind of hitting you? Or, like, and Harleys. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I guess there's been a lot of bikes um, out and about the last few days, too, I suppose. Starting to see some of that stuff. I'm looking for a couple more degrees. I just find it's still a little bit cold to take it in the morning. Yeah, I agree. I uh, When was it? It was... I'm going to say it was Sunday. Because I think it was Sunday. Sunday, I, I dug the two bikes out of the garage. I had to get Mel's going again. So I had to, you know, get the carburetors cleaned up on that and tune it a little bit. I got it running. Took it for a little drive, and it was cold. 
Mm. And then I took mine out, and it was really cold. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't know why, but hers offers a little bit better wind protection than mine does. Wind protection or produces a little less wind? A little of both, I guess. A little of both. <laughs> I, I'm guessing because I've seen your bike that yours naturally moves at a faster speed. <laughs> well, she's got a little Ninja 250, so you can imagine what that is, right? Yeah. And I got a ZZR 1200, which is almost a thousand cc's bigger than her bike. But. So you're get you're just getting out of first when she's in, in fifth. Sure. <laughs> it's pretty close though, isn't it? I have to roll off first to keep up with her and fit or for her to keep up and fit. But uh no, no, there is bikes rolling around. There's uh the birds. The birds are the big thing. I don't know what the actual names of them are, but my wife has taught my daughter to call them the cheeseburger birds cheeseburger birds. the cheeseburger birds and uh this is going to be terrible that everybody that's listening you're getting a treat i know it's not one of our most glamorous topics but here we go i'm going to try and imitate this bird and it's like the <whistles> you know what i mean that bird so i don't know what the actual name of it is and somebody will hear it and be like oh i know what that is but anyway my wife has always called them the cheeseburger birds and now my little ones run around going do you hear the cheeseburger and at first i didn't know what this was about and i'm like what do you mean do i hear the cheeseburger listen for the cheeseburger i'm like child you've gone nuts <laughs> what are you talking about listen for the cheeseburger and her and i were out in the truck and mel was nowhere around like she was at home and this went on for like a good 30 minutes her saying do you hear the cheeseburgers because we had stopped somewhere i think we were stopped at mcdonald's getting a happy meal and there's one around there or something and i'm like i have no idea what she's talking about the she like do you want a cheeseburger i thought you wanted chicken nuggets and no anyway it turned out to be the cheeseburger bird. And that's just, that is a very good classic one for spring because that's about the only time you hear them is in the spring. I guess you kind of hear them in the summer, but they're not as prevalent as right now. No, it's not that one. No. Nope. I see the gears turning. <laughs> know what it is. But, uh, no, so that's that's the big one I noticed. What's the bird that sticks out in your mind, Ben? Maybe it'll come to you, maybe it won't, but what do you I think? I don't know. It's, around here, it's, it's just the flocks of birds. Like You can't even make out a, a singular sound. Although I have to say the freakiest sound I have ever heard from a bird. We were in Kedji. Uh, I think it was probably spring. And uh, we went in with friends. And... Uh, it sounded to me, the world, and I, I spoke to this about this before, like somebody was, was dragging a cart up the trail and it was coming from forever along. It was just this like clanky, clanky, grindy noise, right? And it seemed like it was coming forever. And I was like, man, like, these people got to get here soon. Like, <laughs> They're walking circles. Like, what's going on? Yeah, like, what are they doing? Like, the trail's not that long. I was just walked it yesterday. Anyways... All of a sudden, they they were there, like they were right in the camp. And I looked at it, and it was just birds everywhere. I don't know if they were starlings or what they were, but they were just everywhere. And they just swarmed us. And they swarmed for about four or five minutes. And then they just went on. And it was the same racket, clacking, grinding, clicking noises. For, And you could hear them for, for honestly, I want to say for hours. No, it was for like miles. Like they were going. And they weren't moving fast. They were just, just swarming through. Like it was just crazy noise. Uh, I'm trying to think what those would be. Those those are the blackbirds, aren't they? Like they're a blackish kind of bird. Yeah. I think I call them suicide birds because they're the ones that always kind of like they'll hunker down in the fields as you're driving along, and then all of a sudden they'll all fly at once. And instead of flying up and away, they like literally fly out over the road. And they, to me, they, they have to have some sort of death wish. You know what I mean? That's another good indication of spring for me is driving to the fire department. I'm starting to dar dodge birds. It's killing you, isn't it? You have to figure out what that bird is. <laughs> it's not the, not the sound, but. 
the heck is that? It's an owl. I was going to say, it sounds like some sort of bird owl, maybe? Yeah. My grandmother used to talk about it. She said, it ought to her, it sounded like, who, who, who cooks for you? Who, who, who cooks for you? <laughs> And it's funny that some people will, you know, they pick these things up and then the next time you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, I could totally, totally hear that. You know what I mean? That's what this cheeseburger bird was. I'm like, what the heck's a cheeseburger bird? And Mel was telling me. And then the next morning she came out, Willie once again said, there's the cheeseburger. And I was like, you know what? It does sound like this thing's going like cheeseburger. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> No, it, it's still not quite that. I'll have to try and find it and see if I can put a link to it. It's a very similar sounding bird, but that's just a two-stage, like, up, down, up, down. This this is a three distinct kind of sound chirp this thing has. That's the chickadee. I don't... It's a real common bird. I know that, because you hear them everywhere. Oh, yeah. Uh... I mean, there's, there are so many noises that birds make. Bird out. That's <laughs> yeah. But I'm surprised you haven't heard a loon yet. How many loons do you have out by your, uh, like, do you get a lot of them out there in the lake by your camp? No, there's usually at least one breeding pair. And that's about it. Yeah. And uh, the last few years they've had about seven young. And by the end of the year, they have one to two. Hmm. Uh the there's a, a breeding pair of eagles that uh take them out uh they're they're pretty brutal and they do the same thing with our ducks the eagle takes out quite a few ducks every year um so it's uh, we've, oh. we've seen a few of the brutal fights like they're pretty vicious i'm gonna see if mel will send it to me because i think she has it on her phone while we're chatting here and it's not a very big video but I seen something the other day that was actually kind of, I'm not going to say I've never seen anything like it before, but for this area, I really haven't seen anything like it before. Uh, video. Not the Canadian goose and eagle, is it? Uh, it was, it was eagles, uh, bald eagles. Yeah. And they're not really, um, sorry, I was trying to type to her and typing and talking, man, I can't walk and chew gum. So you know how that went anyway. Uh, it was like seven bald Eagles all together in a group, just kind of like circling and dancing. So I don't know if it was a mating thing. I think it's, uh, or they were, you know, jockeying over territory or what it was, but it was real interesting to see. And then of course one Hawk. There's this one hawk that was kind of off to the right, and it, he just wanted nothing to do with anything of them. But it was like five to seven eagles. I can't remember how it was, and they were bigger bald eagles. Like, it wasn't uh, full-on immatures where their heads were just starting to come out and stuff like that. Like, these were full-fledged bald eagles doing this, like, weird dance circle. The, the most terrifying part was it was over top of the school, but... <laughs> Yeah, it was just weird. I'd never really seen anything like that at in this location. Now, Shubenacadie, up around where you're at, um, across the basin there, or whatever it is, the the river, they're very common to congregate there because a lot of uh, fish scraps and stuff get thrown on the fields for uh, fertilizers and things like that. So they'll come there and it's an easy meal. But there, there was nothing here to really, you know, draw them in. <clears throat> Uh, my area we hear a lot of your geese honking. So I think it is the chickadee that's making the sound you're talking about. Oh, it could be. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'll try and find a good uh, imitation of the sound, and I'll post a link up or something like that to a YouTube video or whatever the case may be. No, it's not that. I mean, it sounds very similar, but I don't think it's that one. It, it might be. Scott, out and about, where are you at there, my friend? I know you're, uh, I believe, you've told me before and I can't remember where it is. But, yeah, coming on the way back north, they come up here and they pester us for a while. I mean, 
<laughs> the best thing I've ever seen was somebody said, uh, it was a meme or one of those pictures online. And it was like, do you know why Canadians are so friendly? And it's because once a year we concentrate all the evil and hatred and put them into the Canadian geese. Because I think I've told you this story before. The most beat up I've ever been of any winged animal was when I had to get a Canadian goose out of a uh, drain pipe. Have I, I told bet. you this story? I, th I think you may have, but it's worth another telling, I'm sure. All right. So while <laughs> I wait for Mel to write me back and Scott to talk to us there. So what it was was I was working with Natural Resources. So this is several years ago now. Um, and down by Dollar Lake Park, funny enough, down by where the first uh, Nova Scotia uh, bushcraft gathering was, um, we got a report of... Uh, I'll get her to send me a picture. Apparently she didn't take a video. She took a, a picture. But anyway, I'll, I'll grab it there. Anyway, we got a um, a call about this goose that was in this drain pipe. Because there was a pond on one side and kind of like this deep ditch on another side. But anyway, it was living in this culvert. And the this lake was commonly fished. And it was coming out and harassing fishermen is what it was. So anyway, um... We got the call and we were told to go, you know, try and get this thing out of the pipe. And I mean, we're not talking like, you know, one of the smaller pipes. This was probably a good, you know, three inch culvert or something like that. I could walk in it, but I could crawl hands and knees in it kind of deal. So anyway, I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I'll go get this thing out. Me being stupid thinking it's a goose. What's the worst it can do? Well, the worst it can do is uh, <laughs> when you crawl in head first and you have no way of getting away from this thing, it will literally... Uh, geese bite, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> geese bite. They will hit you with their wings. They will maul you with their feet. They will do whatever they can to try and kick the snot out of you. And, I mean, we're talking maybe a 30, 35-pound bird tops. What do we put the knuckles to me, man? Like, I was beaten to snot. Turned out head nest in this thing, and that's why it was being so protective. So that changed things a, a lot. But anyway, went in, stupid, head first, had no escape plan. Got the snot kicked out of myself by a goose. And uh, yeah, so that's a goose is one of those things that I will give a very healthy swath if I am able to, because I know they'll just straight up kick crap out of you. They don't care. Like <laughs> Canadian goose don't care. It'll kick your butt anyway, right? <laughs> 300 pound, that's nothing to a 35 pound bird. <laughs> no, and I mean, I was, I, I'm Fighting not trying bit. to say I'm tough. But, I mean, I can take a little bit of a beating from an animal because, I mean, I've grabbed bald eagles. I've gotten, you know, different animals I've had to latch on to, raccoons, things like that. And you always kind of get somewhat, quote, unquote, mauled, but not really mauled. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of thrashing involved. I would grab a bald eagle over a goose any friggin' day. <laughs> Eagle's predictable. You know what I mean? Like, the goose just goes ballistic. <laughs> yeah. Between, like, yeah, I Gotcha. Northern New York. That um, makes sense. Um, I've heard stories over the years of, of Canadian geese knocking men off horses, breaking legs. Um, I've, you know, that's with their wings. Their, their beaks are pretty strong and they hit hard when they hit with them. Uh, we go to the Shuby Wildlife Park. You, I'm, I know you've been there. And that's actually one of the funniest stories with my daughter. My daughter, we, we went there and we, we bought the seeds and my daughter was feeding them. And she said, a ducky bit my thingy. And it wasn't a duck. A duck did not bite my daughter's thingy, but a goose did. The goose reached out and grabbed her hand, and it bites down hard. Oh, yeah. Especially for that little girl. She she wasn't too fond of that duck. Like, the ducky bit my thingy. And she talked about that for weeks. Uh, so I mean, kids, to her, it was just, you know, because it looks like a... No, nah, it doesn't look like a big duck. But I mean, there, there's, I could get how a small kid, you know, confused duck, goose, whatever. Um, but yeah, they're they're just a terrible jerk. The only animal <laughs> that might be a bigger jerk than those are magpies, and we don't have them around here. And thank goodness for that. But a magpie, uh, I'm sure some of our uh, Australian listeners and stuff like that may relate to these. And I, I've only ever seen them in captivity, to be fair. But I know, like, they'll just dive bomb you. You'll be, like, walking along, and they'll just dive bomb you. Riding your bike, dive bomb you. They'll chase you. Like, they're, they're and they're, they kind of look like a cross between a raven and a crow. I know somebody's going to roll their eyes and be like, they're nothing like that. To me, they look like a cross between a raven and a crow. And, like, they just harass you. They are the world's biggest 
jackholes when it comes to harassing you next to geese. Uh, Mel finally sent me some pictures of those eagles. So this this here is the, like, you can see them there. That's five separate bald eagles. And I mean, it was taken with a cell phone picture, so it's not the greatest picture in the world. But sure. that's five separate bald eagles. And they were just circling and doing this little dance. And, like, you can kind of see the... I don't know if I can zoom in on that. Nope. Yeah, it's not working. But anyway, I tried to scroll in and zoom in, and all it does is make everything else bigger and keep the picture the same, which is ridiculous. But anyway, you can kind of see the white heads on them. But yeah, I've never seen like a group of eagles like that just kind of circle and dance in an area that's as open as that. I've seen it down by the, you know, the fish farms and things like that when they're eating. You know, they're just circling, looking for food, but there was nothing there. These guys never landed. They just did this thing for like a good half hour. And then they all went their separate ways. Like they were having an Eagle convention. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, like sounds, birds, definitely a huge thing. Uh, fishing starting up here now, like we mentioned that a few weeks ago, fishing is open. So, uh, there's that too. Well, fish, first day of fishing season is April 1st for some places, April 15th for all places. So technically, you know, everything opens up tomorrow, I think is what it is. And if Gary's here, I'm sure he'll be the first to correct me. Well, I'm sure he will. Magpies and spur-winged plover are the nightmare here not. <laughs> so you know all about the old magpies. I have been attacked by a gray jay, so I can't imagine. Uh, <laughs> two animals have attacked me in my life, and and I've spent a fair bit of time around a lot of animals. Uh, but to actually claim that they they tended injury to me was a groundhog while I was walking in an airport. I remember and, that. Yeah, the pictures. I, I, that was a crazy groundhog. And the other one, I was at my grandmother's cabin. We were walking down to the cabin, down, she's right on the ocean. And I had a black jacket on with a white hoodie. And we used to feed these birds bread. So I think they, they seek the color white. And it jumped off the branch and just glided straight at my eyeballs. Like it was coming straight at me. And I dropped to the ground and uh, stood back up. And I think that was really weird. And I looked behind me and he had landed you know, in a tree about 10, 15 feet behind me. And I'm looking at it thinking, what the hell is up with you? And lo and behold, this bloody thing did it again. He jumped off and straight back down, right at my eyeballs. I dropped it again. <laughs> and my grandmother, she said, get inside. So I ran inside. We were sitting there talking. So I think it was going for the, the white on your hood. <laughs> Maybe but, so. Yeah. Like, birds get trained to do things. I mean, uh, crows. Crow's super smart bird. Uh, it's been proven they can remember faces and people and stuff like that. So a gray jay remembering, you know, white means food. Oh, yeah. Very plausible. Uh, and we, uh, they're very trainable animals. Like if you, I get, I'm going to get myself in trouble with wildlife now. There are certain animals that you can quite quickly and easily train to eat out of your hand and, and, and do things. And a gray jay is probably one of the most intelligent animals I've ever met. And you can train it to do a ton of things, a little bit of treat, a little bit of encouragement, and those things will do almost anything. Uh, I've never so tried we, to be honest, but I mean, oh man, just a little bit, take a little bit of bread, lay it down and just stand there. You stand there real still and he'll come and he'll lay it. And then later on, you take the bread and you leave it in your hand and you lay your hand down and he'll come and he'll take it out of your hand. And you just keep doing it day after day. And eventually, you can hold the bread up, and he'll come down and take the bread into your hands. He'll sit there, he'll eat it, he'll look at you, he'll, he'll almost talk to you, and then he'll just fly away. And eventually, you don't even need the bread. You hold your hand up, and things will land in your hand. You can do that inside of a weekend with a gray jay. Like, that's how trainable they are. That's kind of neat. I'll have to give, well, I'm not going to say I'll have to give this a go, but I have stored this information for potential later use. <laughs> Uh, and my grandmother, a uh, big influence in me and being in the woods, she she used to swear that they tell on people. She said, like, when you're hunting, if you're mean to a gray jay, you will not catch anything. They will warn every animal that you're there and you're they're gone. Like, they're just leaving. Uh, 
but uh, yeah, like they're they're, uh, and I believe the the natives uh, used to say that if you kill one, whiskey jacks the other name, like Ray J whiskey jack. I think whiskey jacks what I know them as, but I knew what you're talking about. We had this conversation before. It's a really bad luck to kill them. I've heard that. Like, yeah, if you you shoot one, like it's 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 extremely bad luck in some some groups so. so troy miller was just saying in the comments there that he was on a service call once and got attacked by a rooster that is another dirty animal to get attacked by because they will straight up like they they have rooster fights for a reason you know what i mean because they're an aggressive <laughs> animal but uh yeah no i wouldn't want to get attacked by roosters thankfully um both my grandparents, my neighbors, we did for a while. We all had chickens with roosters and they never really bothered anybody. But I've also like had friends that had the same thing and the roosters would attack them and they got pretty cut up over it because they got pretty good talons, right? Yeah. They say, uh, they say just for anyone who's looking for like a guard animal that a goose is better than a, than a German shepherd. I have heard and much like yourself people that own big farms will buy geese to kind of be guard animals like you said one they're noisy and it scares off a lot of potential predators and two they're they're just mean yeah no they're they are they're naturally a great guard animal so if you have a goose and you leave it in your land and if it knows that something's not supposed to be there they they fly out their wings and they start to hiss and they come at, at you and they make themselves as big and ugly as possible and they're pecking at you and it's annoying enough that most people go away. Where a dog being potentially more intelligent and that's that's uh, debatable, I guess. You you can just do it when they're going to go, oh, thank you, and they'll eat the treat and they'll ignore you because well, you're not a threat, you're feeding me. Uh, but geese a little less easily to uh persuade i guess uh, i've heard yeah. well i mean what do you feed a goose for a treat right <laughs> corn. Corn, corn bread i guess but they're just mean they're just a mean animal in general but um before i forget because i still have it up in the background there uh you did send me a picture there ben that you wanted us to flash up and maybe talk about a little bit so yes. let's fire yep. that on up here uh, I'll foil it up on the full images here. So I think this was with the Shubenacne Wildlife Park, was it not? Yes, this is the Shubenacne Wildlife Park. So they are looking for some pictures on reptiles and amphibians. Um, and also, was there something about sound? Uh, yeah, so we can hear, let's see what this whole thing says. We can hear spring peepers, and we're officially launching the new uh, Nova Scotia Reptile and Amphibian Atlas. Uh, photos of spring peepers in Nova Scotia for my natural, okay, that's who sent that one in. Uh, to help us uh, to help us upload your herp photos or audio recordings to iNaturalist and join our project Nova Scotia Herp Atlas on iNaturalist. Uh, and the email address is down there, which is Cunston, Nick Cunston at mercy ca. Yeah, I yeah. butchered that. I apologize to that person now, but anyway, email address is there. If you want to send out some mit, uh, pictures, uh, you know, pretty good cause to help out an interesting cause if nothing else. We'll do our best to see if we can share that on our page somehow. Uh, but no promises. We are technological geniuses, but sometimes we do get stumped by simple things. <laughs> Share to page. I think we have a page. Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures. Sure. Look at that. We managed to put it on the page. Woohoo! And several easy clicks. And I actually have some photos off a yellow spotted newt or yellow spotted salamander. I don't know why I always want to call them newts, but a yellow spotted salamander that I'll send into those. Uh, every year we find a few at the cabin and around here, and, and it's always a, a joy. Uh, so that must be why you guys make jackets out of them. You must be talking about our geese. Goose down is is awesome, man. Like oh man, it's want... super warm. Yeah. I'm trying to think yeah. what's better than that. I, I I can't think duck down. I guess duck down is really good, but I don't know if goose or duck is better. 
I think Elder Duckdown is technically you can get the highest loft. So there's a fill power FP rating and 800 is considered pretty good. A thousand's considered awesome. But I think Elder Duck Duckdown actually get as high as 1200. Yeah. And I think the way it's measured, and I could be off on a little bit, but it's basically one ounce will fill a certain volume. So I think it's one ounce of down fills. I want to say, and I want to say it's like a mixed measurement. Like it's like imperial and, and, and don't look that up. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, Ben sometimes uh, thinks about things. And then if he can't remember it, it tortures him. It, uh, it I, you can actually see it to those to those of us that are listening to our audio file, files only. It's worth jumping on just to see because you can see the physical torment that goes on inside his head when he's like, "Oh, I know this, and I should be able to say it, and I can't," because it's it's literally it's uh, it's kind of marvelous in its own uh, its own right. I mean, it, it's kind of cruel of me to say such, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's basically inches squared per ounce so it's the number of inches squared per ounce or centimeters a certain size centimeters per gram centimeters cubed per gram so when they take this number um, you get your uh your, your insulating weight values And, uh, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and it's, it is the considered some of the her weight war warmest items you can buy, like duck down or down in general is, is per ounce for ounce the, the most insulating thing you can buy. And it, yeah. I mean, it works for birds, so it's got to work. I mean, there's a testament right there to it, but, um, um any case, uh, we kind of dove off the, the sidetrack okay. there, much as we do. I mean, much as we do. If anybody that's listened to us for any amount of time, they realize we go off on tangents. But, um, yeah, I, I think this was a nice little topic to talk about because it's relevant, and it's only relevant for a short amount of time because we're probably going to get bombarded with the bugs very shortly. And, uh, I mean, not only the peepers are coming out, but you're starting to see a few more snakes. And, I mean, things are going to start doing what they do. Uh, and they may not be as vocal about their, their stuff anymore because the predators are going to start moving in on top of them, right? So yeah. I think it was a good topic for this time. Uh, one of our shorter topics, unless you had more to say on it, Ben. No, I think we've covered it. I mean, it was just kind of a fun little episode, I think. Uh, not not as maybe informative as, as some of the other ones may or may not be, depending on your point of view, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's just a fun topic. I, I, I found... You know, every morning it's just the noises are, are getting greater and it's just kind of, you know, I think it's quite for me what a lot of it's about, just the enjoyment of that nature and, and stuff like that. So, uh, and I think it's something that everyone can enjoy. Like I don't, even if you can't get out into the deep woods and away from everything, if you're near some greenery, you're going to hear the birds and you're going to hear the, the sounds that, you know, kind of makes a trip. And you think about it. Think about every trip you've done. And when you wake up in the morning, what are the sounds that you hear um, in the morning? And, and how much that sort of like sets your mood for the rest of the day. Oh, if you can get out in the woods right now, if life allows you to, the best time of year to wake up in the morning. Yeah. Uh, and, it could, and it does. I think I, it has a huge enhancement for me anyways and I, I assume this is for everyone and maybe i'm crazy oh you're crazy we all know the answer to this question <laughs> Same. uh but it it does have a huge effect on my mood uh just that those 15 minutes or 20 minutes of laying there in the morning and hearing all the birds and hearing the sounds of water ideally like maybe a small stream and all this stuff going on it, it really does, like, change your mood for the whole day. Like, you, you just, it's, it's, it's a, I don't know, like, mood enhancer. It's 
Green Air, Love Sounds of Winter Ending, definitely brightens their mood. Yeah. Uh, if you're down, if you've if you've had a hard and long winter and you really want to find a way to, to break that slump, I'm telling you, get out and just sit there and listen to the sounds of nature at 7 o'clock in the morning, approximately. 6.30 works pretty good, too. Uh, but just as the sun's coming up, just go out and sit down in a nice, quiet clearing and just listen. And uh, it's going to have a I think it's going to do a lot for your mood for the day. And just because I was, while you were chatting there, I looked it up. The cheeseburger bird, which I've been called, you are correct. It is chickadee. And specifically, it's the black-capped chickadee. Yeah. So. And one of the more common birds around here. Oh, for sure. Uh, um, but. That is that. That is a, an, a, a discipline that I don't think either of us are quite as good at as, as we would like to be. It's just bird identification. There are so many birds around that we could be identifying. Just I have a book, Birds of Nova Scotia. Uh, they do make great books. I mean, Birds of Nova Scotia, Wild Edibles of Nova Scotia. There's Nova Scotia books out there. I really should open it and look at it more. Uh, it's it's kind of when it's with my Mammals of North America collection and... Um, of why there's birds in that, but anyway, <laughs> it, it, you're right. It's a book I never really opened up and did a lot with, and I really should, because I would love to be able to identify birds better. Yeah. Uh, I know that I had a ton of fun growing up. My grandparents had a book. It was, I think, Animals of North America, and it was a big green book, uh, probably like an inch and a half, two inches thick, and every, like, there was a whole chapter on mammals, reptiles, fish, birds, you name it, it was in there. And I would go up to their place and I would open that book up and I wore that book out. Like, I am 100% responsible for all the wear in that book, I guarantee. Uh, Merlin Bird great. ID. I'll have to check that out. I know I've, I've downloaded the plant ID one. I don't have it on my phone now. I update it or, or up it and just that was an app that wasn't getting used as much but there are so many apps out there for identifying of birds and for plants for insects you name it uh it's there and uh it's 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 a great great resource uh, that's i think we've talked about before like uh bushcraft and just different books we keep in our, in our personal libraries uh and you know that almost yeah, make a good episode, you know that? We should dig up some of our books, and uh, maybe next week. What What is next week? Yeah, we're not into gear of the month yet. Um, next week, you want to do like some talking about books? Oh, no, you had an idea. What's up? Gear of the month could be book of the month this year. Oh, could have book of the month this month. Books that we would recommend for people to get. And, and you've got so many options. But no, yeah, everything from survival books to bushcraft books to plant identification to you name it. I mean, hikes. I have a whole bunch of hiking books, uh, ultralight books. I, I, you know, uh, I have my dirty little secret is I have Rubbermaid, like large Rubbermaid containers just overflowing with books. And my wife, I need to get rid of something. There's no room. <laughs> I've cut a lot of mine down. I'm down to like 10 to 15 books I keep faithfully, but I keep eyeballing more. So <laughs> I'm down to like 10 or 15,000. <laughs> <laughs> Mel's switched over to digital, and that's what she kind of wants me to do too with a lot of my books is digitize them. But, I mean, I like the hardcover book. It's it's nice to be able to bring, well, not a hardcover, but, you know, like an actual physical book. You can drag it into the woods with you, and you don't have to charge it. You don't. Uh, although eBooks. Are good for like ten thousand pages before between charges. Mm. Mel has one, loves it. So I mean, I I can't say nothing. She uses hers, uh, and man, she may even go longer than that before charging it. it. It's outrageous how long she gets out of that. So I know what you mean, but still, something about a good physical book in the woods. It's just nice. I've I've read in a in a hardcover book that you read ten to fifteen percent faster on paper than you can on a screen. Yeah, I could probably see that. But in any case, Rand what's that? 90% of facts are made up. <laughs> and I just made that up right now. 
so but no I, I did read that you do read faster on paper than you do on a screen and that's just a fact now i i wonder if that's going to kind of change as people kind of grow up learning to read on screens but yeah i'm looking at that merlin bird app too scott so i brought it up on google play and i'm going to throw it over my phone when we're done up here because my phone's actually off in the other room i'll have to look that up now too in any case, um, we can probably wrap it up there. You think, Ben? I mean, yeah. like I said, shorter topic. Good topic for the time, though, I think. Yeah, no. It's... Yeah, so uh, as always, uh, get out there, have some fun, enjoy things. Uh, the weather's really starting to turn out neat. Like we said, the sounds and the s- smells are, are, are awesome. Uh, the water's opening up. Do be careful. It's still kind of cold. If you fall in, get dry quick. Uh, but, you know, it's it's coming. The, the weather's just going to get better and better for the next little while, as long as you're into that warm and comfortable feeling. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I hope people get out, enjoy it, uh, share your experiences, share your things, uh, and uh, talk to you next week. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for everybody that showed up. We'll see you next week.